Okay, welcome to the new format. Sorry for the echo, and these are probably going to be a little bit more on the fly than they used to be. I don't quite have time to put together videos like I used to, so we're going to have to do things as I am doing them. And the goal for today is to route a PCB using that computer and that CNC router. So I got the, the 3D printer working a couple weeks ago with uh, just some bash scripts. I'm going to try and replicate the same thing with the router here. Problem is the router seems to be a bit more dangerous to me. And <laughs> so there are more ways in which this can go wrong as far as I can tell. So we'll see what happens. I am going to do my best to try and document things as I go and we'll see what happens here. So before we start trying to control the router here, I want to talk about how I set up this script to control my 3D printer. Now the process is largely going to be the same between the two devices, and as I mentioned, the 3D printer is a lot safer to use, so it's a little bit easier to work this out in that environment. So the 3D printer is, well, it has a motherboard whose CPU is primarily this the CH340 chip, and we can see that it's plugged into my USB port, and we have a CH340. Now, what you can see is I have two CH340s here, and what's interesting is that the, uh, the CNC router and the 3D printer use the same chip as their CPU, but they don't use the same firmware, so there are some nuances between the two that I will need to work out here. But let's just talk about the 3D printer first. It is using a firmware called Marlin, and Marlin accepts a set of commands called G-code. Now the CNC router is running a firmware called Gerbil, and it is also going to accept G-code. So again, the process is going to be quite similar. Let's look at some actual G-code here. So if I go into, uh, I have some documents and objects. Let's see what I have. I have a dog 2h.gcode, so let's just take a look at that. And here we can see an example of some g-code. Now, the process for 3D printing is out of the scope of this video, so maybe at some other point I'll show you how I generated this g-code, but for now we're just going to talk about what is actually here. And there are a few different types of commands that we can see. First of all, there are these ones that are prefixed with a semicolon, and these are just comments. So we don't want to do anything with a comment. And fortunately, in a case like this, where we have a actual command and a comment on the same line, the firmware is smart enough to recognize that this is just a comment. Okay, then we have these other kinds of commands. We have these M commands, and we have these G commands, and if we scroll further down the document, my Vim commands are betraying me here. Anyway, we can see that we have some of these that are prefaced with G1. Eventually you'll see some that are, here's one actually on line 43 that's prefaced with G0. And anyway, th these are basically different things that the machine can do. And essentially what we want to do is send these commands to the firmware on the 3D printer, allow it to execute the command, and then send the next command, etc., etc. And so we're gonna need to communicate with it in some way. So I'm gonna use Tmux here to split the screen like this, and I'm going to show you the script that actually does that, that, that communication. So let's say Vim. Okay, so this script is going to actually control that communication. So the first thing that we have is this setup. There are a few things we need to do in order to get this working. So we have the 3D printer connected to our machine through a USB port. And this is actually going to appear as a teletypewriter. So if I split the screen once more and just list slash dev slash TTY USB star, it's going to show me that I have two USB teletypewriters, and this is going to be referring to my CNC router and my 3D printer. At the moment, I don't actually know which one is referring to which, but we will, we will figure that out as we go. So let's get out of that and come back to Vim. And so what we're going to need to do is set all of this up. Uh, first of all, we need to have the baud rate established, and that is not something I do in this script. So we're going to, once again, split it. And just very quickly, I'll show you how to set the baud rate. 
Now the baud rate is basically the speed of communication that the, the CH340 chip is expecting. And in this case, it is 1152.00. I know that there is an actual way to say that number, but I have just gotten in the habit of saying it like that, and it caught me off guard trying to say it in a video. So <laughs> we can do STTY, and we are going to do dash F for file, slash dev, slash TTY USB zero. I'm gonna do both of them in just a second. We'll do them separately. We could string it all in one command, but keep it easy. We'll set the baud rate to 1152.00, and we want to say raw minus echo. Now, these two parts of the commands, I don't quite remember what they do, but uh, they seem to have been important, and I remember that they need to be there. So we'll Google it later. Anyway, that's going to set our baud rate for the device. So let's go ahead and quickly do it for the other one. Uh, if you want to jump around and bash, you can hold option on a MacBook at least and use the arrow keys and skip argument to argument. Anyway, we'll do that to both of them. So our baud rate has been established already. I heard my machine click over to the left, which is a good sign. That means communications are working. Anyway, so our baud rate is established outside of the script and now we can do our setup. So, here I just take some command line arguments of our data is going to be this G code, so all of this, this file, and then our device is going to be our TTY, our teletypewriter, our 3D printer in this case. And then we're going to need to create a FIFO pipe, a first in, first out pipe. And this, what I found is that if you actually just, you can just create a raw communication with a device. So once again, we'll split, and I'm actually gonna split it twice here. Look at that. Okay, so here I'm going to cat my output to, or let's actually have this one go that way. And let's hope it's one. Yes, we got it right. Okay, we can see it's responding with gerbil. So output of the device, the device, our, oh, actually this is the wrong device for, for this case. This is the, the CNC router. So the CNC router is, sending us our computer information on this screen and then on this screen we are going to send cat uh, to dev slash dty usb one so now our output is going to go there if i send it a dollar sign for example it's going to give us some help messages now in theory you could just say cat this g code file over to the tty usb but unfortunately, that sort of just dumps all of the data at once, and you end up with some really sporadic behavior. And this is why I'm being cautious with the CNC router, is because on the, P the 3D printer, I found that just piping all of it over at once ended up giving me these, these globs of filament being dispensed all at once, and that was undesirable behavior. So on this case, I want to be a little more careful. And we solved this problem with our we as an I, I alone. <laughs> So I solved this by, come on, by creating a first in first out pipe. And this allows a much cleaner communication between the device. So what we're going to do is set up this first in first out pipe. I give it a unique name and we can just kind of create that file as a temporary file on the system. Now, one line at a time in the G code file, we are going to pipe that over to the device. So you can see right here, we echo the line of G code to the device. This while loop is a little bit interesting to read because we're going to while read G code. So we're going to create this variable G code reading from what is specified at the very end of the loop here, our data, which we set up here as to our first argument, which is this file. So one line at a time, we are going to pipe that information over. Now, we only want to send relevant things to the controller. We want to send actual commands, and all of the commands in a 3D print are either prefaced with a G or an M. So we are going to look at every single command that we are going to get and check to see if it has this command prefix. If it does, then we are going to log that some information happened. This allows us to give it really, really fine and precise measurements of what our print actually did. So every single command that we pipe over is, is matched with at least one log statement. So pretty interesting that we can get that data through this method. Anyway, we pipe that single command over to the device and then something important happens. I'm not going to show it right now because I'm not prepared to do a 3D print, 
but sometimes certain commands, such as heating up the hotbed or the hot end, take a long time. And the device will respond saying that it's busy and it's waiting. And we don't want to be sending more commands during that process. So what we're going to do is wait, essentially. We're going to set another loop that is going to read from the pipe. So we're going to be reading from the pipe. And it is going to basically continuously check to see what the pipe is telling us or what the device is sending back. And it's going to wait for it to get an OK or a 10 second timeout. In those circumstances, we are going to send the next line of code and we're going to print out a warning if we have hit that timeout. One other important thing that I forgot to mention about this is a background process that is running here. We are going to be piping our device, the output from the device, the 3D printer, into the pipe and we're going to send that process into the background. That way that's just going to keep running and when we come into this while loop, we'll have something to actually be reading from. And the last thing to do is to tear down. So we want to kill that background process and remove the temporary file system. And then at the end, I just specify a few ways to write some arguments. So that's our basic 3D printer version of this. And since the CNC router takes G code, I am assuming that it is going to work largely the same way. So I've begun working on a similar script for the CNC router. Uh, but I want to do some more manual tests first before I actually try and send it any G-code. So we'll get there. So in order to begin using this router, I want to first set the zero point. And for now, I'm just going to do this manually. So I want to set up a line of communication with the device. We'll do that the same way I showed you before. And the first thing I'm going to do is just send it G28. And that is kind of a command for just returning to home, return to zero. And you can see it doesn't move. So it seems that it, it's, it, it apparently thinks this is zero, I guess. If I send it G zero Z 10, we can see that it moves up 10 millimeters, I assume, or 10 units, whatever those units are. We can see up top that it's responding with okay. So let's see if I send it G zero Y I'm, going to, I'm keeping it small here because I, yeah, see, that didn't do anything. So I'm thinking I'm moving that in the wrong direction. Can't use the up arrow there. So G0, Y, negative 10. I am not seeing that move. I also have a camera in the way, so who knows what's actually going on. I'm not seeing anything moving. <laughs> Go, let's go big. Okay, we're moving over. Going, we're approaching the device. Let's see what happens. So G zero Y ten. I can hear it. What is trying to spin though? I think it's that one. I think it's this bottom one down here. Okay, this is not what I was expecting to show here. So, we're learning things. <laughs> I'll come back when I've made some progress. Okay, so after some trial and error, you can see that the router, well, you can't see it, but I know it. Uh, the router is actually working, and it turns out that the bolts on the Y-axis connecting the stepper motor were too tight. And for some reason, that was preventing the router from moving the Y-axis. I don't know why that would be the case, but... So it is, we can see now that if I type in G0 and let's put in Y10, the Y axis will move 10 millimeters. Again, I'm still assuming millimeters. So that was still a useful exercise, although I had to pull it apart a few times because I think I understand how to set the zero point. So right now, if we go to G0, Y, let's, well, we can leave it at, actually we can leave it where it is, so we're at y equals 10. So if we put in g28, now on the 3D printer, this would actually move it to the home position. So it would move it to a fixed 00 position. But I believe the gerbil 
is going to make this the new zero zero. So if I put in G28, no, no, that's not what it did at all. Okay, I was totally wrong about that. It has an idea of what zero zero is, and so I did not understand that. Okay, we're learning things. <laughs> I think the next thing to do is to, well, I'm, I'm, the part I'm nervous about is actually sending the commands for the circuit board over. Uh, I'm going to send the whole file and we don't know what could happen. So I'm thinking what I would want to do is first I need to figure out how to set the zero zero point because I don't know which direction it is going to be looking from. I looked at the G code in some viewer online and it showed it as if the zero zero point is right in the center it's either going to be in one of the four quadrants and i'm not sure which so i want to set our zero zero point to be right here in the middle and i also need to set that for the height of the bit and what i'm thinking is that if i go ahead and try and do that and then send the g code over i can watch the cnc router move about with, without it actually cutting anything. And this will sort of minimize any potential risk of actually doing a cut. So I think that's going to be the next move. Okay, I believe I have discovered how Gerbil will have us set the home position. So right now I have it at the, well, the home position. This is actually G28. Let's go ahead and put that in. That's the center of the machine. So what I want to do now is send it the commands to put it where I want zero, zero to be. So first, if I remember correctly, we're going to do G0. And I believe we had X of 5. I'm kind of looking back at my previous commands to see if it's in there. Yes. Y, negative 20. And Z is good where it is. So we can move it to this position. And then we can send it to G92, I believe, and then X0, Y0, Z0, and this is going to set our 0, 0. So now if we do G28, it's still going to return to the very center, the home position. But now if I put in G0, X0, Y0, Z0, it's actually going to move back to the position that we had originally set. So I believe that is how we are setting the home position here. And now the thing to do would be to send it the actual code. So wish me luck.